Yes, thank you, uh, President. Uh, I have uh, carefully listened to you, uh, Prime Minister, uh, for, for 30 minutes. For, for me, uh, even when you have spoken an hour, I, I, I would have uh, silently uh, listened to you. But you, you didn't talk about the ruling of the, of the Constitutional Court, because the ruling of the Constitutional Court is, is very clear. Article 1 and Article 19 of the treaty are null and avoid in Poland, are in contradiction with the Polish Constitution. That's the decision of the Constitutional Court in Poland. And that is a constitution and treaty, Article 1 and Article 19, that you have accepted in 2004. That the peace government has accepted at the moment of the Lisbon Treaty. And these Article 1 and Article 19, you know what it is. Article 1 is an ever closer union. And Article 90 is the central role, a role of the European Court of Justice. By the way, it's exactly for the same reasons that the hard Brexiteers went out of the European Union. For these two articles. Article 1 and 19. So, the sinister game that you are playing is very clear. The sinister game is that you are putting a politicized uh, constitutional court inside uh, Poland. And that uh, politicized constitutional court is criticized by whom? By the European Court of Justice. So the way to eliminate the decisions of the European Court of Justice uh, is to take with the politicized constitutional court of Poland a decision that the ECJ has no longer a right of decision in Poland. That is what you have done. And what you have done, and what you defend here, because uh, you, you are making references to others, eh? uh, to the, the, the French and, and the Germans, and there is something to say about the German constitutional court and so on. But they never did that. They never said that Article 1, and Article 19 is not longer applicable in Poland, in their country. They never did that. Like I said, the Brexiteers did that. So what you have done is in fact putting an existential threat to your country and most of all to the people, to the Polish people, who are the most pro-European people of the entire European Union. That is what you have done. And that remembers me, that remembers me, that remembers me something very dramatic in European history. By the end of the 18th century, when a great country like Poland disappeared, a mix, a fatal mix of bad governments, of external threats, and the betrayal of conservatives who could not accept a modern Polish constitution at that time. Well, I am the only one who sees some fatal resemblance here by what is happening today in Poland. So, I have to tell you, I know that you are a historian. I know that you are a historian, Prime Minister. So I wanted, in fact, to start my, my speech and to end my speech with a, a classic historical book, The March of the Follies of Barbara Tuckman, because it remembers me what is happening in Poland today. It starts with a simple decision, and it goes in another decision and a further decision, and that is when the folly starts. It's in fact not people who want that, not the ordinary Polish citizens. It's the ego of big power players who are not thinking what will be the disaster at the end of the story. So my wish, Prime Minister, is please come back to these stupid decisions and end, together with the Polish people, this march of the folly that you have entered in 2015.